So basically, uh, there are three subtopics that I will present and three different parts of the strategy that we had with Nordeus to get installs at scale with a positive ROI, which was the infinite goal. Uh, first part of the whole story was building a brand awareness because, frankly speaking, it's very hard to get users to download your app if they do not know what the app is all about and, and who you actually are. The second part is going to be a performance part, which is acquiring all the acquisition channel that Google has uh, in AdWords in order to get the ones that are working the best to get us installs at scale with a positive ROI. And then actually the third part is acquiring that strategy on scale, which means export globally the strategy that is working on the testing markets. OK, so just a little bit about Nordos. I've seen that Nordos is also a sponsor of, of this conference. I don't know if anybody from Nordos is around here. Hi, guys. Uh, so I'm going to give the introduction and a few of the basic numbers. Please, uh, if I'm wrong, just jump in and tell that I'm not talking, uh, talking uh, the truth. So top 11 be a football manager app is probably the most played football manager app in the world. No, I think it's going to be okay like this. It was released in May 2010. It was a, it's a hero app developed by an independent app developer called Nordeus. And since the release in 2010, they had more than 100 million downloads of their app. And basically now there are around 3 million daily active users and around 10 million monthly active users. And so just to show that this is not strictly business, I'm really an addict of Top 11. And it was, it was very easy for me to be actually uh, in partnership with them because I know the game inside and out. And I play it for the last two years almost religiously on a daily basis. So the basic gameplay would be you're a football manager and you're playing against the real players in this space of, of teams uh, with the infinite goal, as I see it, uh, with winning a triple crown which still didn't happen for me in 18 seasons. As you can see, the, the, the name of the club that I use is Dinamo Zagreb because I'm from Croatia and I'm supporting that club. I know that you have Dinamo in Minsk as well. So there's a connection. Uh, as you can see, I have a very, very good grades of my team, which is like seven stars, which would be something like a world class. But I'm still struggling with winning all the trophies that I want to win or like to catch all the Pokemons there are. So last year I was very close. I won a league. I won the cup, but then I lost in semifinals against the guy named Steve. Even though I thought I'm much better than Steve, but apparently that was not the case. So I'm still in a hunt of a triple crown. But let's go back to business and about the brand awareness part. So at the beginning of 2015, Nordus approached to us and they said, we're going to have the biggest relaunch in the app history. We're going to make a seamless user experience across all the devices for the mobile app, top 11. And the experience is going to be the same. Either you're playing on desktop, mobile, and tablet. And we have a phenomenal creative that we want to share with you that we want to promote with Google alongside with the TV, that we're going to have the TV campaigns on the key markets. So what can you do for us? And they came to us with a video. I'm going to show you now two videos. So I please, please pay attention to it, because I'm going to have one question after two videos, because it, it actually is very, very much in the connection of building brand awareness and adjusting your content to a channel on which you're going to advertise. So I'll try to play it. It's going to probably be hard because of the internet connection. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure if it is going to work. OK. Uh, is there any possibility that we establish an internet connection? So basically, they came to us with a phenomenal creative with Jose Mourinho, who is just probably the most popular football manager in the world. And OK, can we play it? So this is one, of, one version of the video. Please pay attention to details if you can. Ah, OK, great. Everything is a game. Life, football, doesn't matter. People will always think they know you. They'll even judge you and tell you you are a failure 
zero. We regret things in our past. But there is a way back. Always a way. You know? In any fight, you've got to believe in yourself. Never go back. Want it more. Try harder. Be an enemy for others. You will sweat blood for this game. Tear down everyone else around you. You will fight your way into the light. You will live the revenge. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> Are you not listening to me? Yeah, I am. Go on. Top 11 2015. Be the special one. Download now for free. Yeah, so we can try it on the next slide. There's in. So then there is a different version of the video. Which is this one. Are you not listening to me? Everything is a game. Life, football, doesn't matter. You know, in any fight, you've got to believe in yourself. Never go back. Want it more. Try harder. Tear down everyone else around you. You'll fight your way into the light. You will live the revenge. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> Are you not listening to me? Yeah. Top 11 2015. Be the special one. Download now for free. So basically we went with a format that is called YouTube for App Promo, which is a true view in-stream video. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that kind of advertising, but okay. <laughs> so those are basically pre-roll videos that you, you know the ones that you can skip after five seconds. I think you know the type, somebody who works in the marketing knows them and use them, somebody who is actually just using YouTube probably finds them annoying sometimes. So the, the idea of the format is that it's a skippable format where after five seconds, if you engage the user, they're going to see the video and then they're probably going to engage with the content of it. And what would you say, which video did we use for TrueView for App Promo? Would it be the first one or the second one? So how many of you think it's the second one? Uh, is anybody uh, brave enough to say why? Because uh, it engages you the first five seconds. Yeah, so... Mourinho, what's Mourinho? Yeah, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, when you have such a huge star as Jose Mourinho on your video, you want to show it as soon as possible because you want to grab the attention before people actually skip the video. And that was the main... Uh, the it was kind of a problem when a client comes to you with a phenomenal creative such as this one and then you say, yeah, you know, we would like to change it a bit. You know? <laughs> but fortunate enough, guys from Northerners are, are really, really great to cooperate with and they said, yeah, it makes perfect sense. So apart from that, what we have done is also to shorten the video because what the statistics have shown that videos around 30 seconds work uh, very, very good on YouTube and work better than, than the longer ones. So the second version was actually the one that we used. Okay, now I'll try to... <laughs> is there a chance that this is going to work? I really apologize for the, for the technical problems. Okay. So basically what we have done is we've got the key markets that Nordeus uh, gave to us and say we said we're going to have a TV campaigns there. We want to build brand awareness, but we want to build brand awareness with uh, YouTube and Google as well, but having in mind the installs as well, not just to give money on YouTube, but having any installs and having any results on the, on the, on the user acquisition. And we said, okay, we, we actually have a channel just for that, which is kind of a hybrid of brand awareness and performance channel, which was YouTube. And it was YouTube for a promo uh, format that was basically showing you the video. And all the time of the video shown, you had a call to action saying install the app. So it was kind of giving us the possibility to measure brand awareness, which we measured with brand lift studies. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the brand lift studies, but those are basically the surveys that Google makes for the YouTube campaigns in order to see did we make an uplift in ad recall or brand awareness of the ad that was, that was actually displayed. 
So what Google does is basically it shows the survey with a question, have you heard about this or that brand? And it serves it to people that were affected with the video. And then it has a control group of the same targeted segment by the, by the people that actually haven't seen the video. And then we measure the difference to see how much did the YouTube video actually affect the awareness of a certain brand. And so after six weeks of the campaigns on the key markets, what we have seen is 40% brand uplift of targeted, mar targeted markets, which is a phenomenal result because usually in average it goes around 10, 15, more so because all of those markets actually had the TV campaigns as well. So it was hard to make that, that kind of a huge leap in brand awareness because all the people that even that haven't seen the YouTube video probably have seen the TV ad, but still YouTube was able to give a 40% of, of brand awareness. And a part of that, we were able to provide, provide 60,000 app downloads in six weeks. So just to go a little bit step, to rewind just a little bit back and to say a little bit more about the strategy that we have applied before the results is actually that when we got the key markets from Nordeus, we said we're going to do a little bit of market research to see the segments that you're aiming for, what is the potential that we have on key markets in order to apply the optimal media plan and media strategy to kind of the, the distribute the budget on the markets in a proper way, not to over over, uh, over invest in one market and under invest in, in another one. And then we have built a media plan. And after a media plan, we've, be done, we've built a media strategy with YouTube and with remarketing and not to go too much in a heavy technical details. And we have launched the campaigns and these were the results. After, after we have seen the results, the next stage was actually, okay, people know about the app, people download the app. Can we make performance campaigns and can we get the positive ROI? and as many installs as possible. So that was the next step. And before going to the next step, I just want to have a little bit of intro of the inventory that actually Google has for advertising. And I don't know how many of you are aware, but Google has seven properties that have more than one billion users. So it's, it's a huge, huge inventory. And I'll, I'll just count them from left to right. So it's Chrome, Android, Gmail, Google Maps, YouTube, Google as a search, and Play Store, which translates in the app acquisition ecosystem in AdWords on three main channels from the five different entities. First channel is search, second channel is display, and the third channel is YouTube, which is video. First channel of the search actually consists of two different, uh, different uh, ecosystems, let's put it that way. Uh, Google search and then search on Play Store, which, are, which is one simple, uh, which, which is actually making one campaign where you bid on keywords and you're trying to utilize on the intent of user to actually download the app. In Play Store, that works uh, particularly very well because if somebody is searching for online football manager app in Play Store, there is a high probability that they're actually looking to download the app. So. And later on, you're going to see the results that we had on a Play Store, which was kind of a breakthrough for us in, the, in this hunting for Holy Grail, which is a positive ROI when we install the apps. The second one, the second channel that we use is a display channel, which consists of AdBomb Network and GDN Network, which is a Google Display Network, uh, where we had a lot of, a lot of thoughts on how to target the, the, the segment that we think is going to give us the positive ROI. And there was a lot of testing and iterations be among different uh, demographics, which is different ages and different gender, and among different behavioral targeting where Google, with, their own, with the signals that we have in AdWords, we can actually detect user who is likely to make a purchase within an app, very much interested in football, and is a gamer as well. So when you apply these targeting, uh, targeting uh, methods, you are actually getting the segment out of which you think you're going to get the installs that are going to give you not only the, the new user, but the engaged user and the user that is going to spend within the app. And then the third channel, which is YouTube, I already talked about it. It's kind of a hybrid channel that gives you the possibility to get the installs, but it also brings brand awareness to the whole story, and it kind of backfills the channel on search because people that see the video 
they tend to search for that app later on on Google search, and then we, if we bid on the right keywords, we actually take that, we take that user and, uh, to download the app from search channel. So it has kind of a double, double impact on all the campaigns. So after like four, five, or six weeks, I would say, of iterations on key markets, the real breakthrough that we actually had was by early adopting search Play Store ads, because it was at the time a very, very new product. And as I already said, if somebody is searching for Football Manager app within Play Store, the probability that they're going to download the app is really, really high. And the numbers that we had in the first month of campaigns on search in Play Store were really, really amazing. As you can see, we had like, I, it, was, it was even 10x, around 1,000% growth in the installs on search when we applied Play Store as the inventory. Cost per install was 60% lower whereas the engagement and retention rate was 51% higher, and the average ARPU, which would be average revenue per user in the first seven days, was 68% higher than among all other channels. And since then, we actually have a positive ROI with Nordeus, and we can say that strategy on the key market worked very well, and we were actually ready to expand globally which is the third part of the, of the whole topic, getting as many installs as possible with the, pos uh, with the positive ROI. Because like, positive ROI can also mean I have seven installs, uh, I paid $70, and we earned $100, yoo-hoo. So what you want to do is when you have a strategy, you want to apply it in as many markets and in as many countries as possible to get as many positive ROIs as possible. So what we have done in a matter of days, when we, when we have seen the strategy is working, we immediately used all the tools that actually Google and, and AdWords offer to build campaigns as much as possible and as fast as possible. And what we have done, we've built search display and video campaigns on 17 different languages, covering tier one, tier three, and tier three markets, uh, tier one, two, and three markets, uh, uh, which was around 70 or 80 markets on which we had campaigns in 17 different languages. We uploaded, uploaded more than 5,000 5, image ads, uploaded all the video ads that we had, and built a comprehensive keyword list to cover as much as possible within the target audience that we see that, are, that tend to install the app and actually engage with it by buying that very, very valuable tokens that I buy so often myself. So it was the same strategy, uh, making a market potential analysis and research in order to build a media plan that's going to be optimal, and acquiring all the learnings that we had from the, from the let's say, at a testing phase or a, or a key market phase, applying it to, the, to, to all the other markets, and then launching the campaigns, and preserving the positive ROI, but this time on scale. So in short, with all the technical issues that we had, uh, this is mainly the it. The key takeaways that I would like you to take from this presentation are adjust the content to the channel on which you're going to advertise, because even though you have a phenomenal creative, if it is not fit to the channel on which it's going to be displayed, you may not be using the 100% of the potential of that, of that creative. Second one is Test, play, iterate. If you can afford it, always have a testing budget because even though if you have a winning strategy, it's not going to last forever. You know how fast-paced the user acquisition market on, uh, in mobile is. And by early adopting all the new solutions, you actually may have a competitive edge by in, uh, implementing something that nobody implemented before and you have a clear space actually to advertise yourself. Which, which definitely comes in handy and improves the results. And the third part, which I think is maybe the most important one, is if you have a market strategy, try to look at the ROI on the market level. Don't look at, at the channel level, because you're going to see search is giving me phenomenal ROI. YouTube is not giving me that phenomenal ROI. But you have to, have, you have to know that YouTube also has this, this uh, D let's say a double, double uh, impact on the campaigns by filling the search with the inventory and with the demand of users to actually search for your, for your uh, mobile app. So look, no, where, uh, instead of looking at the channel level, please try to look at the market level because that's 
where you're going to have the biggest impact and, and you're going to have the biggest actually space to play and, and iterate and test and try to find the things that work for you. So yeah, that's basically it. Thank you very much for bearing with me and with all the technical issues. I hope you enjoyed it. And for all the questions that you might have, we're going to answer it on the Q&A session. Thank you, Bogdan.